Hey, and welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do this in Blender. I'm using Blender 3.6 on a MacBook Pro, M1 chip and 16 RAM. So on the viewport, press Shift plus A to add a cube. Then press S plus 10 to scale it by 10. Then press S plus Z plus 1, 5. Then add another cube. Then press S plus 10 to scale it by 10. Then press S plus Z plus 0, 5. Now I'm going to replace all the things. I'm going to speed up this process. Now rename the big cube to domain and the little cube to pool. Then press 3 on your numpad. This is how you enable the numpad. Go to edit, the preferences, go to the input and check the emulate numpad. Now let's animate your object. Then press G plus Z to move it on the Z axis. Press Z to switch between render mode and click on wireframe. Press R to rotate the object. Then press G plus Z to move it on the Z axis. And on frame 1, press I to make a keyframe and click on Location and Rotation. And on frame 100, press G plus Z to move it on the Z axis and press R to rotate. And press I to make a keyframe and click on Location and Rotation. And on the timeline, press T or right click. Click on Cubic, press Ctrl plus E or right click and click on Ease Out. Let's set up the fluid simulation. Now select your object. Go to Physics. Click on Fluid and change the type to Effector. Select the Pool Cube. Click on Fluid, change the type to Flow, and the Flow type to Liquid, and leave the geometry. Now select the Domain Cube. Click on Fluid, change type to Domain, Domain type to Liquid. Scroll down to Cache and change the type to Modular so you can bake each thing separate and if Blender crash or you want to cancel your baking. And don't forget to check the Resumable. Change the End to 150 and the End Frame to 150 as well. Scroll up to the settings and change the resolution to 128. For better results, make that number higher. And by the way, the result video have 150 in resolution. But for this tutorial, I'm doing 128 in resolution. Scroll up to the liquid settings and change the narrow band width to 8. And now I will show you what the narrow band width do. So to show that I will start with bake with 3. And this is what that look likes. Now make the number to 8 and hit bake. This is the difference. Scroll down to Mesh. Check the mesh, change the upres factor to 4, and hit the Bake button. Wait for the baking to bake. Then right-click and shade it smooth. Go to the Modifier and add a Smooth modifier. Change the Repeat to 5, and change the factor to 1. And now hit the spacebar to play the animation. Let's add materials. Select the domain. Go to Shadings. Click on New. Select the principled BSDF. Press X and delete it. Press Shift plus A to add a glass shader. Plug the BSDF to surface and change the IOR to 1.33. Change the roughness to 0.034. And now you have a water material. Now let's make a scene. So press Shift plus A to add a camera. And we are going to snap the camera to this view I have on my viewport. So to do that, press Control plus Alt or Option plus 0 to snap your camera on the viewport. I like to have my camera on 100 millimeters. Let's set up the camera a little bit. Press G plus Z double to move it back a little. Press G plus Z to move it on the Z axis. Press G plus Z double to move it back a little. And I like to make this to one so it's black around. I also like to track the camera to an empty object. So to do that, add any empty object. I like to use this one. Press G plus Z to move it on the Z axis. Press S to scale it. Then select the camera. Go to constraints and add a track to. Select the empty object, and now you can see the camera is tracked to the empty object. Now let's animate the camera. Press 7 on your numpad to get to top view. So on frame 1, press I to make a keyframe and click on location, and then go to frame 150. Move your camera as you like, and press I to make a keyframe and click on location. Let's play the animation by hit the space bar. Let's add lights. So start with add a area light, and press S to scale it and G plus Z to move it on the Z axis. Then press Shift plus D to duplicate the light and place it like this. The press Shift plus D again to duplicate another one and place it like this. And the top light, change the power to 10,000 and change the two on X axis to 2000 W. Press Shift plus D to duplicate the light and place it like this. Then press Shift plus D again to duplicate another one and place it like this. Change the two lights on the Y axis to 3000 W. So now we have a cube off lights. Now let's set up the HDRI. So go to world. Click on this yellow dot and select the environment texture. In the description I linked the HDRI I used. So download that. 
Click on Open and choose you HDRI image. So I'll show you my render settings. So I render in Cycles and GPU. Check the denoise and the noise threshold. Also change it to 0.1 so you can render faster. My max samples I use is 300. I also like to use motion blur, so check that if you want. Another thing I like to do is go to the view layer and check the denoising data. Then go to compositing. Press shift plus A to add a denoise. Then plug noisy image to image. Plug denoising normal to normal. And last plug denoising albedo to albedo. Then go to the output. Change the file format to FMPEG video, the encoding to MPEG4, and last go to the video, and the make the video codec to H264. Then go to render over here and click on render animation, and wait for your video to render. And here is my results. And feel free to subscribe for more tutorials and videos. Thank you for watching, and I hope you like my tutorial. Comment down below what I can make in the next video, and with the editing and all that thing.